So Brock University recently added an interesting item to its special collections. Why don't you tell us a bit about it? Uh, the Woodruff family collection came from the Band and Percy family, and it was in the family's hands for almost a century. When a uh, family member died, they thought it should be returned to the community of Niagara. So they thought Brock University was a great place for it. And when we got the collection, the content of it pretty well tells the history of Niagara from its earliest days developing settlement all the way through to basically World War I. And the Woodruff family was involved in any everything to do with Niagara, and it's just rich in history. So what does this collection mean to Brock University? It's actually bigger than Brock University. We applied for this collection to be recognized as cultural property to Canada. Right now, this collection has been designated as nationally important. Having that here at Brock, in the community where it all began, it's great for the community, it's great for Brock's reputation as a place that can house these records, because of the content, it really shows not just our local history, but part of our national history. So it's a big deal. So at the announcement, you mentioned that the uh, whole Woodruff collection was in the process of being digitized. You want to talk a bit about that? When we got the Woodruff collection, we knew it was very special. And the Woodruff family, when they came to Niagara, they married into a very prominent loyalist family. We have a group here that support a lot of what we do up here in special collections. They're called the Friends of the Loyalist Collection at Brock University. When they heard of the Woodruff collection coming here, they put together some money and uh, said, what can we do to support the collection? And we said it would be great if we can digitize every piece of paper in the collection. And they jumped on board right away. They thought it was a great idea. And we're sending the materials out to be digitized. Within a couple months, they'll come back and we'll start posting those materials up online. So every piece of paper in the collection is going to be digitized. We've never done anything to that extent before. Usually with our digitization projects, we pick kind of the gems of a collection and post them up online, kind of as an advertising, this is what we have, come and see more. But this is the first time we're going to go to this length, and it's definitely a collection worth doing that. So we're here with Anne, and she was actually involved with describing the entire Woodruff collection. and She's going to tell us about some of her interesting uh, pieces and some of her favorites. Uh, so Anne, uh, you were involved with quite a bit of it. What are some of your favorite pieces? I would be hard pressed to tell you what my favorite was because the whole thing was just amazing. I really felt close to his grandson who was also named Samuel DeVoe Woodruff. And there's a really poignant picture of him with his mother standing at the railway station in Niagara Falls and that was in 1916. He's going off to World War I and he doesn't come back. He's killed over there and he's buried in France. And then there were personal items. There are, there are surveyor's compass that was passed down through the family. There's a box of matches, and the matches are still there. These are just amazing items. The family kept absolutely everything. There were little scraps of paper, uh, bought milk from Mrs. Bunting. Who keeps that? <laughs> the Woodruffs kept it. So what do you think this collection means to the average student? Because of the richness of the collection, it's not just, oh, this is one letter that talks about this one subject. The Woodruffs were, and this is quoting a family member, they were pack rats. They never threw anything out. So when we're talking about the records about the Welland Canal, it's not just one or two documents. We're talking hundreds of documents, letters back and forth on how the Welland Canal was developed and what kind of problems they were going through, how they resolved those problems, who was working on the canal, what pay they were getting. It, it's incredibly detailed. And any student who wants to do a project on a bigger scale, that you need that kind of detail and richness. This is a collection that's just a gold mine. So how can students access the Woodruff Collection? We're in the Special Collections and Archives. It's part of the library. We're on the 10th floor and uh, we're open Monday through Fridays, uh, 930 to 430. It's a closed collection in the sense that none of the materials circulate. But anyone can come up here and use the collection uh, during our open hours. They can stay here for seven hours and just have full reign over the collection. So it's just a matter of coming in and having use of it. Thanks a lot today for uh, talking to us, David. It was nice talking to you. Uh, very interesting about the Woodruff Collection coming to Brock University. Uh, stay tuned to Brock TV for more.